Hey folks, in this video, we are going to be discussing how to automate data pulls uh, from one Google Sheet to another using Google Apps Script. Uh, so what we're gonna do today is we are going to be extracting data from a workbook called Sample Data for Google Sheets Tutorials. So we're gonna collect all of this data here, and then we are going to move it into um, a workbook, a blank workbook like this, using Google Apps Script. So we're gonna write some code and that's going to enable us to run a script that will collect data for us and populate workbooks so that we don't have to. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna move pretty quickly through this uh, and then at the end, I'll probably break down some stuff and then expand upon it in other videos. Uh, you should treat this as a level one tutorial um, and in future videos, I'll make things uh, a little bit more dynamic. So we're gonna begin by accessing Google Apps Script, which exists in our extensions menu. Um, and Google Apps Script is uh, an, a way to augment Google Drive, so you can use it with Drive and Gmail and Sheets and Documents, Slides, all that type of stuff uh, to, to like make options uh, less manual or, or to create your own functions. So what we're going to do is we're going to create some constant variables. Uh, so uh, our constant variables are going to be our source ID, which is going to come from that source sheet where our data is. And then we're going to have a const for our destination ID, which is going to be the workbook where we're going to send this data. So I'm going to close off our example workbook because we don't need it anymore. I'm going to go to our, our untitled workbook. This is ultimately where we're going to want to send our data. Uh, so you can think about this as like our data extraction point or our, or our endpoint or any of that type of stuff. So we're going to be sending data here on a daily basis or an hourly basis or a weekly basis, whatever, whatever your cadence is. And then we are going to be capturing this source ID workbook up here and we are going to paste it in here. So basically, we're going to be able to use these things like street addresses or telephone numbers in order to identify those workbooks programmatically. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build a function called data extractor. And uh, I, you create a function by typing out the word function and then giving it a name, adding a parentheses, and then adding these curly brackets. Uh, so how I'm gonna begin is I am going to create a variable called source. And I'm going to begin by calling spreadsheet app. Uh, and then once I get the spreadsheet app, I am going to open by ID and then I'm gonna pass in my uh, source ID variable, my our constant. And now I'm gonna create another variable called sheet. And I am going to access, um, I'm gonna get the work or sheet by name. And we're gonna go back to our source data here and it's called short data. So pretty much whatever you're, if you're using another workbook that is not this, this is linked in the description, by the way, you just enter in the, the name here in between two single quotes because this is a string. Uh, so now that we have that sheet, we are going to create a variable for data and we are going to access sheet dot um, get range. And then we're gonna begin at the first row. So you can see here in the documentation, it says give it the row number and then the column number. So we're gonna begin at row one and we wanna begin at column one. And then we want to tell it how many numbers of rows to go. So if we wanted to, we could stop at row one, we could stop at row three, but in our purposes, we want the entire sheet. So what we're gonna do is we're going to call our sheet variable and then we're gonna use a function called get last row. And what this does is this programmatically just goes to the bottom of the workbook and gets us what the last row is so that we don't have to. Uh, so what we're gonna do then is we're going to enter in the number of columns that we wanna go over. So we are going to use our last column function in order to get the entire range of data. The last thing we're going to do is use the get display values because we're getting a bunch of data. And now we have, uh, we are able to, we've collected the data from our source sheet. So what I'm gonna use is something called logger.log. 
And what this will do is this will allow us to see what is in the data variable. So I'm gonna save my project. I'm going to name it data extractor or data extractor. I'm going to run my application and it's going to ask me to authorize access. And it's gonna use some aggressive language when it asks us for uh, permissions. And the reason for that is because Google doesn't want you giving people access to your Google Drive unless if you actually know that person. It's everything that we're doing here is safe, but if somebody else is asking you for access to your Google Drive, you need to be very careful about giving it to them because they're able to edit, create, and delete and see all of your Google Sheets data, right? So for our purposes, totally safe, if you do not know the person that is asking you for this access, do not give it to them. Cool. So now that we've given it access, we're able to uh, pull in data from that Google spreadsheet. And uh, it's very gnarly if this is the first time that you're looking at this. Um, but basically what you need to pay attention to is we have country, name, month, inventory, gross revenue, net revenue, UK, and mark. When we go to our sample data, we get country, name, month, inventory, gross revenue, net revenue, UK, and mark. Wonderful, we have all of our data in here, and if we scroll all the way to the bottom, you can see our last value is Stephen in Canada, and we go back to our data extractor app, and we go down here and check it out. We got Canada and Stephen. So what happened basically is when we entered in uh, get last row, it went to the very last row in the data set, and we said get last column, it went to the very last column in the data set. This enables us to be programmatic, and this is what enables us to automate this workflow. Because as your data expands and contracts, you no longer are going to have to go in and make changes to your script because the script will dynamically respond to whatever goes into the spreadsheet. So now that we've accomplished that, I'm gonna add in some documentation because I think that's um, best practice. So I'm going to say this, block of code collects data from the source workbook. And I'm going to indent this. Oops, sorry. I am going to indent this because then that enables me to expand and collapse it uh, so that if my script starts to get kind of long, I can like uh, just see it better. And and the reason that you you document things is for readability purposes. Uh, so, you know, as you get more into scripting and stuff, you'll figure out your style. This is my style. Um, and it's just how I do things. So now what we're going to do is we are going to access um, our destination workbook. So I'm going to say uh, uh, destination workbook access points. And what we're going to do is we're just going to recreate a lot of stuff that we did in our first block. So instead of calling it source, we're gonna call it destination. And we are going to use spreadsheet app. And we are going to open by ID. And now we're gonna call that dest ID variable. And then we are going to call um, endpoint. And this is just gonna be our, our any, or the first sheet in our untitled spreadsheet. So we're gonna call uh, the destination variable that we just created, and we're going to get sheet by name, and that is sheet one. And just so that you can see it, that's just what this is called right here. Um, and now what we're gonna do is we are going to uh, send the data. So we are going to call endpoint and then we are going to get range and we are going to start at row one column one and then we are going to get um, we're going to have to access the sheet variable from our first code block because we want to get the last row of data from the the source sheet because if we do the last row in the destination sheet, it's not going to align with the amount of data 
that we have in our source sheet. So we are going to access sheet.getLastRow and sheet.getLastColumn because we want to prepare the spreadsheet for the number of values that we want to send from the data variable. So let's take a moment to unpack that first for a moment because what's happening here is this spreadsheet, the untitled spreadsheet has no data in it. So if you did, if you called the endpoint uh, variable in order to get the last row, it would be zero. And that does not match the number of rows in the data variable. The same thing goes with the columns. There's zero columns in here. So when you say endpoint.getRange and you access row one, column one, get last row zero, get last column zero dot set values for, I don't know, it's like 30 rows of data across five columns or whatever it is. It, it doesn't compute that. You have to be precise. So what you're doing is you're calling sheet one in order to get the last row because that last row aligns with the last row of data that you're sending in. So you're effectively saying in the end, at the end point, you need to have, you need to start at row one, start at column one, and you need to go down to the last row from your source data. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna save it and we're gonna run it and hopefully we don't get any errors. And now we're gonna to go to our untitled spreadsheet and we successfully move data from one source to the other. Now there's a, a few steps left that we need to do, but what I wanna show you is that this alone is not adequate to support an automated system because data can expand and contract. So what'll happen is, is like one day you may wake up and you might have 30 rows of data, right? And, you know, there are going to be times where you have exponential data, which means it consistently grows and it never contracts. But there are going to be some projects where you are going to have data sets that contract. So a best practice that I enact is clearing out my data before I send it. And the reason for that is I'm going to go back to our sample data here. And I'm going to delete everything after row eight, okay? So we went from 30 rows of data down to eight rows of data. And when you look at this spreadsheet, we still have 30 rows of data, right? So in your mind, imagine that one day you show up and you have 30 rows of data, right? And then the next day you show up and you have eight rows of data because people deleted accounts or line items got restated for whatever reason that, that your business or your use case would would have that happen when we run this script again or if this script ran again on its own check out what happens it successfully compiled but the problem is because we overwrote at, at column at row one column one and then line eight and then column five or whatever that data never got deleted right so what's happening is all of this is being overwritten, right? And you can't really tell that because my, frankly, my example was bad. So what I'm gonna do is say, check this out, right? And then we're gonna run our script again. It's gonna successfully compile and we go in here and check this out, right? All of this data updated, but this data remained left over. So what I recommend and what I implore in a lot of my scripts is in addition to sending the data, I begin by clearing the data, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call end, oh, no, I am not gonna call whatever that was. I'm gonna call endpoint and I'm going to get range and I'm gonna start at row one. I'm gonna start at column one. And now I'm gonna access endpoint. And instead of using get last row, I'm going to get max rows, right? So what this will do is this will go to the very bottom of the endpoint and get the endpoint uh, variable. And it will literally get the last row or the max row in the sheet, regardless of if there's data. Cause that's effectively what last row 
and last column functions are doing in Google Apps Script is they are looking for the last row of data. Um, but what we want is the max rows and the columns regardless of if there's data. And instead of setting values, we are gonna call clear. And now what's gonna happen is when we run this, it will hopefully successfully compile, which it did. And now check it out, right? So we cleared the entire range and then we rewrote the data from our workbook. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back here, I'm gonna hit Command Z, we're gonna have our full data set, we're gonna go back to our data extractor, we're gonna hit run. It's gonna successfully compile. We go back and check it out. All of our data updated in here. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna rename our spreadsheet, uh, automating data pulls. And now we're gonna set it to automate. There are a couple different ways that you can do this in Google Apps Script. You can uh, write it into your script. Um, uh, uh, I forget what specifically it's called, but like you could just, you could set a timer in here. Or you can go over to the triggers um, section and you can add a trigger and you can choose which function to run. We only have the data extraction function. And then you have a couple different ways that you can do it. You could have it run on open, you could have it run on edit, you could have it on change, you could have it on form submit. There's a lot of different ways that you could do it, right? So if you do it on open, that means anytime somebody opens up the workbook, your script will run. Data, the data extractor function will run. If you do it on edit, that means anytime somebody edits the spreadsheet, it'll run. On change uh, means, I forget what that means, but basically you get the point, right? You could also do it for like form submission. So that's what I mean when, when I talk about Google Apps Script being a way to augment Google Drive. You can use it with any Google Drive product. So what we're gonna do is we are going to do a time-driven function. And what we could do is we could set this to run every every hour or every day or every week or every month. We're gonna have it run every day and we're gonna set it to run every day at 5 a.m. to 6 a.m. so that when I log into work every single day, I'll get uh, data updated for me so that I can like build a dashboard on top of it or do any of that cool stuff. Sweet. So this was a level one way to um, automate data extraction from one Google Sheet to another. Um, I think this is a really effective way to import data into Google Sheets environments. Um, I think this is a verbose way of doing it. I have uh, a couple other ways that I will, that I'll be demonstrating on my channel. So, uh, you know, if you found this helpful, I hope you'll come back and check out some other videos I have. Uh, this is also a really great way to augment the dashboard build that I have on my channel. So I hope you'll check that out as well. Um, I'm always interested in feedback, so let me know what you think. And uh, yeah, I wish you the best of luck on your data journey.